Now it's time to get some definitions out of the way. So the first one is a thermal energy reservoir. What is it? Well, a thermal energy reservoir is simply a humongous mass, okay? And so it can then store a whole bunch of thermal energy. Because remember, thermal energy is equal to mass times my specific heat. So when we talk about reservoir, we're talking about something that can absorb a bunch, a bunch of energy and still not change in temperature. Like think about the ocean. If I pour my hot coffee into the ocean, okay, here's my hot coffee, and I pour it into the ocean, the ocean is not going to change in temperature. Well, if it does, it's going to be so small that I won't even be able to see it, okay? It can be very, 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 very tiny. And so I can say effectively that my temperature of my ocean is constant. What that also means is if I'm taking energy from the ocean, I can say it's at a constant temperature. And why do I care about this? It makes my equations a lot simpler. I don't have to worry about doing a whole bunch of integrals because if the temperature is changing as I pull heat out, that's going to change a lot of our equations. We want things to be constant. So when we talk about energy being moved from one place to another or energy coming in, we're talking about it coming from a reservoir, so it's always constant temperature there. The amount of heat that can come from it can be constant too. So in real life, um, thermal energy reservoirs that we use are the ocean, rivers, lakes. Like you're outside a nuclear power plant, they will not have an actual lake that they're pouring into, but they'll have like some man-made lakes around them that they are using to dump the heat into. Same for coal power plants. Some power plants though are right next to rivers and when they are belching out smoke and producing power, they're dumping that hot water into the river. Fish don't like that, so if we can minimize the waste heat, it is a good thing for us to do. And finally, the ocean is the biggest one for us. It's taken the brunt of global warming because the extra heat in our atmosphere gets absorbed into the ocean. And I mean, it is apparently like several nuclear bombs a second of energy being put into the ocean every single day. And the reason it doesn't change in temperature that quickly is because it is such a humongous mass. Okay, next two things here. Thermal energy sources and thermal energy sinks. So a reservoir can be in those big things. We're getting energy from it. If I'm taking energy from it, it's a source. If I'm giving energy to it, it's a sink. So for all of our problems, we're going to be talking about these sources and sinks. You'll see these magical little bubbles. They're not magical bubbles. They're real things. It's just if I'm not caring about them, if I just know that heat's coming from them or going to them, then I don't need to talk about their properties. Like, yes, thermal energy sink, usually atmosphere. Not always, just depends what you're doing. Thermal energy source, a lot of times combustion. As we go forward, we're going to be running into those more, talking about the combustion, talking about the atmosphere, talking about our effects on it. But for now, just know that we can say red bubble, blue bubble. It's a source, it's a sink. One gives me heat, one takes the extra heat away. Whoop, went too far. So we'll stop here for now, and next time we'll talk about heat engines. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.